Well, Callum, the international break might be over. Sadly, another Ramirez family holiday is over, but we have club football returning this weekend as Aberdeen make the trip south to face Dundee at Dens Park as we re- reunite with former manager Mark McGee and, of course, former player Niall McGinn. But, of course, if you are new around to the channel or haven't caught up on our last former player interview with Lee Mayer that was released last week. Remember to check that out after this episode. I had a great time doing it. Uh, it was it was really good fun. I, I really would encourage you to check it out if you've not already done so. And hopefully you enjoyed it as much as we enjoy sitting down chatting to Lee. But yeah, delighted to be back with club football. The internationals were fun for friendlies. The Ramirez family holiday also added a little bit of entertainment, but glad to be back. Mark McGee, well, it could be really fun or terrible, but we'll come to that. Yeah, um, and I suppose obviously with it being the international breaks, we should round up what has been going on, not just at Tawdry, but also on the international scene from an Aberdeen point of view, Calm, um, because we have seen some international representation. Um, thankfully, we're doing internationals, not club football, because Graham Hunter, of course, picking up on our poor pronunciation of the Italian Serie A teams. Note how I'm avoiding saying it again, Graham. But um, I suppose, Calm, we should also just give a quick congratulations to Graham as well, um, because one of the things that was announced um, since our last episode was that the club are um, putting out a series of in conversations with and they will be hosted by um, Graham Hunter. Of course, we both listened to the, the excellent interview that he did with Stephen Glass earlier in the season on his own YouTube channel. Make sure you, you check that out. Um, but I think probably the right man to get these these interviews and, and conduct them, and I'm sure some, some tough questions will certainly be asked of the likes of Dave and, and whoever else is lined up for these interviews. I'm sure he was, you know, second choice after us, of course. We yeah. just demand such a big fee. Um <laughs> No, yeah. I mean, Graham Hunter's interviews are always fantastic. Such a wide range of people that he's managed to talk to as well. Um, very well respected uh, too. And obviously, makes Aberdeen fan makes it even better. I'm sure it'll be fantastic. Uh, I look forward to getting stuck into them. Uh, hopefully, we'll you know, learn a little bit more about things. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, on the international front, we'll start with the 21s. Both Calvin Ramsey and Connor Barron called up and both been playing in both games. First game was a disappointing 2-0 defeat at Tynecastle to Turkey, which all but ended Scotland's very faint hopes of even reaching the playoffs for that tournament. Calvin Ramsey playing the full 90 minutes at Tynecastle and what was probably a tough game for Calvin and the Scotland team as a whole. Turkey looked more up for it and a really impressive outfit actually um, from from what I watched um, of the game causing Scotland no ends of problems Conor Barron coming on for the second half playing 45 minutes and picking up a yellow card in the in the process and in this second game over in Almaty uh, a city in Kazakhstan famously remembered by Don's fans on being so close to the Chinese border well it was not ideal conditions in, in the game yesterday driving rain wind snow and Scotland did find themselves 2-0 up but unfortunately Kazakhstan in March seems to be a problem for Scotland in general mm. um, you know as the haunting memories of the first team appearance uh, there when they lost 3-0 the, the, the 21s lost two goals and the last kick of the game drew 2-2 two, two. Uh, Calvin Ramsey getting 76 minutes into his legs and Connor Barron the full 90 again picking up a booking so showing his fighting qualities um, whilst away on international duties but I, I suppose Calm good for both players getting minutes under their legs but from an Aberdeen point of view both players coming back without injury I suppose that really is the main thing uh, right now, especially given, you know, Conor Barron's uh, most recent form. But I'm uh, delighted for Conor Barron, you know, not, in, not only being involved, but, you know, featuring in, in both games too. In terms of Calvin Ramsey, the fact he, you know, completed the 90 minutes is, is probably uh, good for him as well as, yep. you know, getting a decent chunk of minutes in the next game. It uh, can only be a good thing, those players being involved uh, in that sort of level, good experience for them. Um, obviously, results maybe, you know, didn't go our way, but... Um, you know what, what can you do it's good to have them it'll be good to have them back they'll be better for that experience and at least they're going to be fit as well yeah well I suppose that's something we'll come on to when we, we look at the Dundee game will that be a positive for us in terms of their fitness or will we see 
especially with the travelling involved coming back from Kazakhstan and maybe thinking more towards Conor Barron. Um, will that catch up with him uh, in, the, in the game against Dundee? But onto the first team, Lewis Ferguson didn't feature um, it in Scotland's first game. I've forgotten who it's against. It was against Poland, Glenn. Oh yeah, it was that good. I was more interested in the Wales Austria game because I was interested to see who Scotland may or may not face, depending on the outcome on the Ukraine game. So I found myself um, flicking between the two the two games. But he did get his first Scotland start uh, last night over in Austria, getting seventy seven minutes and doing a reasonable enough job. Um, thankfully, Steve Clark took him off for Billy Gilmore before Austria equalised. So um, fans of various other clubs couldn't blame him too much for, for the result. But I, I thought Lewis held his own um, for his first start. Certainly. I mean, you know, he didn't maybe didn't set the world alight, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he definitely held his own at that level against a decent Austria side. Who I thought it was going to be a bit more... Uh, down in the dumps maybe uh, yeah. given you know the way they exited the playoffs um, but no they, they started off very well uh, put up a very good fight and if it wasn't for Craig Gordon probably would have absolutely pummeled us but I think Lewis Ferguson <laughs> turned, uh, held his own we can maybe add another 0.25 0.5 million onto that transfer value just to say because he's a Scotland starter that's how it works mm. I think um, but no delighted for him um, I think he, he deserves it uh, obviously we've had quite a poor season uh, and, but for the most part he, he's been you know one of the shining lights I've had my criticisms of him uh, regardless um, you know giving it back back off the pitch whatever but um, I suppose <laughs> that fight that um, he's shown is probably to be commended I guess uh, in a sense despite how angry I was at the time and well deserved for Lewis Ferguson it's a shame we uh, you know couldn't hold on for the win but it was a friendly and it was entertaining for a friendly good for Lewis happy for him yeah, well, you can say he's part of the Scotland squad that um, extended unbeaten record to eight games. So I'm sure that that could also command a little bit extra on the transfer fee. And I suppose the, the likes of um, Connor Barron and Calvin Ramsey, you could also add some extra value onto them. The fact that they're getting regular minutes for the 21s as well, down to the fact they're getting regular game time. So mm-hmm. good on that basis as well. And as you said about Lewis Ferguson, a, a key player for us this season, and he is one of the front runners uh, in our player of the year vote and for those of you that do not follow us on twitter at rtg underscore podcast you might miss this over the weekend as on saturday we released our player of the year awards It's, it's not linked to the club this is just based on you as listeners and viewers of the podcast Nearly 500 of you have taken part so far. Callum will include the link in the description for those of you that are watching on on YouTube to take part. It is one vote per person and it is a three-way race so far, but Callum, no real surprises who the front three are. No, I think to be expected uh, going into it, a lot of people surprised me. Lewis Ferguson wasn't leading it uh, for quite a while. Um, but yeah, I think it's it was only ever going to be between those three. And to be fair, I don't think you could really argue too much against any of them winning the award, but be sure mm-hmm. to get involved. Uh, as Glenn said, I'll leave it in the description. I'll need to remember to do so. Um, sometimes not my strong point, but regardless, at least I didn't forget who Scotland played in friendly. So that's fine. Yeah, uh, touche. There's only five votes as well that separate first and second uh, in the votes Your as well. Your vote counts. Your vote counts. Your- your vote does count. Um, Jonathan Main will be um, key chair um, person for the Lewis Ferguson campaign. Um, and I'm sure he'll be delighted for those that vote that way and not waste their vote. Um, because eight of you so far have voted for Matty Longstaff. Um, he is tied fourth along with J. Emmanuel Thomas on eight votes. Um, quite remarkable that he's managed to achieve so much. Although I do think we need to shout out you and Rankin of the Talk Livy podcast because... I think the top Libby boys have been having some fun with this this vote and, and uh, jumping that up a little bit. I think so, and you know, fair enough. I mean, if it was based off my Longstaff's performance for Mansfield, then yeah, fair <laughs> enough, fair <laughs> enough to be fourth. But uh, for us, utterly dreadful. But uh, I think that was to be expected, and you know, fair enough. They're not going, they're not going to topple uh, the, the the big guns, so it'll be fine. 
Yeah, it will be. That that'll be that'll be fine. We won't need to make our way to Mansfield to to hand over a war to Matty at, the, at this stage. But um, a good week for Connor Barron got even better this weekend um, as Kelty Hearts were crowned League Two champions, beating Stenhouse Muir one nil at home, and Annan failing to beat Albion Rovers saw them. Um, have an unassailable lead at the top of League Two. I mean, they've been in cruise control of that league all season. But not only did Connor pick up his league medal, or will pick up his league medal, I should say, we should also congratulate Keenan and Gwenya, of course, playing left back and having a good um, spell down at Kelty this season. He will also pick up the League Two winner's medal. And I think, Calm, that just shows the importance for these players going out on loan. Not only have they got valuable experiences we've seen with Connor and how that's benefited him once he's gone into the first team but Kieran and Gwenny can now put down league winner on his CV as well Exactly and he's gone and uh, got over 20 appearances for Kelly Hearts as well I'm sure the experience will do very good playing with some decent players especially at that level as well uh, at such, mm-hmm. a, such a, <clears throat> a young age too I'm sure it will only benefit him and with that left back spot up for grabs next season he might yeah. fancy his chances and the experience at Kelly Hearts might do him the world of good for that wouldn't be against yeah, of course that. also yeah part of the squad that knocked out St Johnston in the Scottish Cup as well so he's got experience of coming up against um, top flight opposition and, and not losing to them so um, yeah definitely it'll be interesting to see what happens obviously with the new manager and Jim Goodwin I guess there's going to be a clean slate for a lot of these players and there is going to be the option to fight for first team places and I'm sure Kieran and Gwen will be up for that if, if given the opportunity I think so it'll be very interesting with, uh, with Johnny Hayes' new contract which he covered in the last proper football episode not interview episode um, check mm-hmm. it out again at the at the end of this this uh, episode and then Jack McKenzie as well obviously still about as well but maybe I don't know whether they'll maybe prefer Keenan Gwenya going out on loan again um, there might even mm. be someone else coming in the door who knows but it will certainly be uh, a position to keep an eye on um, and no reason why he can't go and you know take the opportunity with two hands yeah uh, absolutely and um, we did mention as you said in our last footballing episode that Hibernian were going to be appealing Ryan Portis's red card I know you want to have a laugh about this and I think it just genuinely is funny because the fact that they even bother to appeal it they have now got Ryan Portis banned for an extra game on top of that as the panel said it had no real chance of ever being successful Mm -hmm. I think Dermot Gallagher just laughed at the fact they were going to appeal it as well on Sky Sports (laughs) beforehand and I saw uh, logically there would have been no chance of it being overturned but then there was a small part of me going it's the SFA remember it's the (laughs) SFA it might happen Uh, but end result fantastic really really funny and just for the seas as well and the fact there was an added game just makes it even better increases our chances that he's suspended uh, of finishing in in, in that top six ahead of going into uh, hopefully the fight for Europe and not the um, fight to finish seventh but um, yeah, it increases our chances. So that's always fantastic. I was reminded again uh, today that Hibs actually got relegated as well, which just made it even more funny. Um, eight years since they lost to Hearts in the releg- at the relegation party. Um, just that just makes it, that, whenever I see that, it just makes me laugh so much that they spent so long laughing at Hearts fans and then got relegated themselves. And I'm sorry, not relevant at all, but just really, really funny. Yeah, I liked how you sent it into our, our group chat on Twitter and Michael's taking himself off Twitter. It must be hurting him today. <laughs> um, back on um, the Aberdeen side of things, the club this week launched a fan zone initiative for the last home game of the season before the split against Ross County. It is a ticketed event at the Beach Ballroom where there will be a DJ, um, food, alcohol will also be served and before fans can then make their way um, either across Broad Hill or um, down across the the cricket field, across to Pataudry for the last home game, as we said before, the split against Ross County. Rob Wicks has been talking about doing something like this, whether it would be in a marquee outside the Richard Donald stand. But, you know, I think the fact that they've managed to sell so many tickets for this event already, Callum, you know, tickets limited at the, the time of recording, is good to see that fans are buying into this initiative. And hopefully if it is a success, we see more of these sort of fan zones because 
it might help bring the atmosphere from that that event then into into the ground at Pataudry as well. Yep, certainly. Uh, if you are going to go across the cricket pitch, don't ruin it before cricket season starts uh, this summer. Come on, have some respect. But uh, <laughs> you know, credit has to be going for uh, has to be given to the club. I think it's a good initiative for exactly the reasons. Uh, you just mentioned it might be a look into something that they might look to continue or have more of um, whether that's in the back end of this season uh, or ahead of next season also ahead of a move perhaps to Transition Extreme it would be even more uh, ideal location really Um, but certainly a good idea maybe it's been sort of a long time coming and in terms of what could be a very very big game uh, for us as well in terms of going towards that European spot if we're there or just fighting to get into the top six at all um, mm-hmm. it could really help build the atmosphere and we will need all the help we can get I'm quite sure so any little any every, every little helps rather yeah and I, I suppose on that about seeing how much of a success it is and um, for as as those that follow us on Twitter again at RTG underscore podcast if you don't we did quote Tom Watt's um, thread he had a informal chat with Dave Cormack and was obviously allowed to tweet some of the, the conversation out. And, and one of those tweets was about the fact that the club are really positive and want to put as much effort into making that new stadium at the beach uh, a goer, despite obviously cost of production going up in the last couple of years. Um, but there's a lot of political support within the city to get behind the project and um, so again, with where the ballroom's based and the, the proposals for that new stadium, it's maybe something that can be linked again in future, be a lot closer with that new stadium site. Um, so again, anything to see and help the club in that, in that will, be, will be interesting to see the outcome and, and thoughts for those that are attending and how they feel that event went and, and maybe where things could be improved if needed. Certainly. I apologise if you had dog barking at any point within the episode. Like now, uh, he's clearly in support of the uh, move to the beach. But um, I, I think, I certainly agree. I mean, you see a lot of clubs with sort of social club kind of aspects. Um, this could maybe sort of develop into, into that sort of thing. But I would certainly encourage you to go and read that thread um, if you've not done so already. I found it very, very interesting, not only about that, mm. but um, a range of topics, you know, including transfer targets and things like that. Um, which he has Glenn said you can find it uh, on our Twitter if you just scroll back a little bit uh, you can do a little bit of work um, but it, 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 I think it, it would be very very beneficial um, and it's certainly a good idea let's just you know hope it goes to plan and all goes well and then I'm sure they'll look to bring it back and I think there does have to be credit to the club uh, for s- sort of creating this sort of initiative I suppose yeah yeah um, hopefully it's not too watered down Um and fans are allowed to enjoy themselves um, well during the event. But as, as you said, you know, some interesting topics on that that thread, including there's talk around corporate and both sponsorship. Um, so see what comes out of that. And, as, you know, the scouting networks being kind of extended to Croatia, Poland, Netherlands, there's talking around two possible targets in those markets, um, including an under 18 player as well. You know, it's stating that the January transfer window didn't go to plan. We didn't want to spend money just for the sake of it, but we missed out on a German under 21 striker. I think that was the one that was doing the rounds on Twitter with people tracking the planes coming in to, to Aberdeen Airport. And Jim Goodwin currently working with Stephen Gunn and Darren Mowbray on targets for next season. So good to see, um, t- you know, ideas starting to take shape um, ahead of next season. Just hopefully those ideas can come to fruition and we're not kind of, re- you know, exposed by poor pricing from uh, opposition clubs. But I suppose as well, these ideas might also be reliant on where the club finishes, Callum. Um, and that's going to be how important the next couple of games coming up are. But there is a couple of departures being set um, with goalkeeping coach Gordon Marshall and sports scientist Adam Stokes both set to leave the club. Jamie Langfield um, confirming on Twitter, easing fears of many, um, that he will not be returning to the club uh, in a coaching capacity. And what I also found interesting ahead of the Dundee game was that Dundee goalkeeper or former Dundee goalkeeper Kyle Leatherin failed to sign for Aberdeen in January due to a contract technicality about the teams he'd played for already this season. 
Uh, and that's how we ended up with Craig Sampson instead. So we could have had Kyle Leather in, um, but got Craig Sampson. I don't know how I feel about both. <laughs> uh, tomato, tomato, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, in terms of Craig Sampson, though, I would imagine, given the fact he's already employed by the club, he will just he'll be the goalkeeper coach. He it sort of makes logical sense, doesn't it? Considering he is currently there now, brought in. Yeah. Gordon Mar- Marshall was injured, and we had needed goalkeeper cover. And um, don't really know how I feel about that. Sometimes they don't have to be the best players to make good coaches, as we see with you know Jim Goodwin, for example. Or you could also stay with Jamie Langfield with what he's done with the submarine goalkeepers. <laughs> well, yeah, that, exactly. That's that's very true. Um, but I'm, I think I'm just quite happy to roll with Craig Sampson. I think in terms of the um, sports science, that'll be interesting to see who Jim Goodwin brings in. Uh, and, and on the talk of transfers, um, you mentioned it there that Jim Goodwin is already working with Darren Mowbray and um, Stephen Gunn. It's very encouraging to hear that Jim Goodwin will have the last say, the final say on who mm-hmm. comes in the door. But I think that sees a lot of fears. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And especially by the way that he's been talking about players having to meet the right standards of this club. Um, if he's going to have the final say, then I would expect that he's happy that those players coming in are meeting the standards he expects of, of every player that plays for Aberdeen to have. But, Callum, that kind of rounds up everything that's happened since we last convened. Um, let's look ahead to Saturday's trip to Dens Park. Both meetings between the sides this season have finished 2-1, both Dundee and Aberdeen notching victory apiece. How confident are you feeling ahead of the trip to Dundee this weekend? I'm cautiously optimistic. Everything's pointing that we should win this game. It should be fine. Dundee, absolutely terrible. Mark McGee, need I say more, really. (laughs) However, We've not taken the lead. We've not uh, opened the scoring against Dundee yet this season. Um, right. We went in front both both games. Obviously, we managed to turn one round. Other one, not quite so much. Um, they've proved more of a challenge than you would expect uh, so far this season. But it'll be, you know, a very good backing uh, from, from the Aberdeen faithful at, at Dens. Um, the fact Mark McGee's there should mean we should be okay I'm optimistic, but I am aware just of what's happened this season, really, and mm. that that means absolutely nothing, really, right now. Is is that kind of more impressive, given how poor we've been on the road this season? That three thousand tickets have been sold in that stand behind the goal. We've already started selling tickets into the main stand as well. Is it more on how important the game is, or do you think there's something to do with that? meeting with Mark McGee again I think a little well a little bit of everything really I suppose uh, given the result against Hibs the fact the game is absolutely massive um, everyone involved the club knows what's at stake basically win in with a very good chance of top six lose and it's pretty much done <laughs> exactly um, the fact it's done it's only done D as well and we usually take very good credit uh, travelling support down there whether that's Tannadice or Dens uh, and then the fact that it's a reunion with Mark McGee is bound to be entertaining one way or another uh, whether that's for us or for Dundee fans or maybe the neutrals a little bit of both who knows um, but I think there's a lot of that playing in but it's just regardless it's just fantastic that we will have such a good travelling support in such a good game uh, and it will almost feel like a home game in a sense Probably, I think there probably will be more Aberdeen fans than Dundee fans there. But Calm, you mentioned the fact that Aberdeen have failed to take the lead against Dundee this season. And that links me in perfectly because Aberdeen have actually conceded first in five of our last six fixtures. Our league visit to Fir Park was actually the last time where we took the lead uh, in a game. How important this weekend is that first goal going to be for both sides? Dundee obviously fighting for their lives. Aberdeen notoriously poor away from home this season. That first goal's massive. You know, we're we're 13 without a clean sheet as well. It's it's huge. It's un- undeniable. I think if we score, then not only to give it something to hold on to, regardless of what else happens in the game, it was a platform to build off. Dundee heads might go down given you know the way things have been going for them this season. And it just creates a little bit of confidence, not only on the park, but off the park. 
uh, as well. But, you know, at the same time, since Jim Goodwin's come in, um, obviously against Dundee United, we conceded first, got a goal back, drew level against Hibs as well, went on to win the game. So if we do end up 1-0 down, as has been the case against Dundee this season, I just hope that the heads don't drop and we do keep at it, as we've seen in, the, in those two games mentioned, and uh, hopefully be able to get the result. Uh, not just that we want, but that we really, really need. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. We've got to take confidence from the fact that in our last two games, um, we've come back and obviously taken you know positive outcome from, well, and positive in the fact that we've not lost the game. But we, yeah, it's, it's going to be such an interesting one because, you know, Dundee obviously took the lead against Rangers and then lost that. But, you know, they gave themselves something to hold on to throughout that game. It, they might have learned lessons from that that game, that defeat against Rangers. So we don't exactly want to get embroiled into a stuffy uh, encounter against Dundee where we're almost trying to break them down. Because if they've got something to hold on to, I think St. Johnson go to Celtic this weekend, they know that for them, this is a home fixture. It's an ideal chance to try and make up uh, inroads into that four point gap to 11th. Certainly. And um, we all know, you know, the Derry can provide a pretty decent backing as well uh, for Dundee at Dens. Um, if, you know, they go goal up, I'm sure they'll be boisterous uh, and we'll probably, you know, sink in, well, not sink in our seats, but essentially. Um, and th- that, can, that can pro- could prove problematic. But as I said, you know, they took the lead against Rangers. Although things maybe haven't clicked for Dundee and sacking James Pake, Mick Pake was a bizarre decision. Um, they do have, you know, players in there that can cause us problems. Now mm-hmm. again, one we know only far too well. Uh, it's it would be really really painful if he was the man to ruin our top six top six hopes. It'd be inevitable almost of the way the season's gone if he was involved in that, and kind of ironic given after what he did in terms of relegating Dundee when he was at Aberdeen, if he was to to hurt Aberdeen in that manner. But our last clean sheet in the league came on the eleventh of December, uh, which also. Um, coincided with our last win on the road um, at St Johnston. So it's been a long time coming since we've won a, a league game away from home, Callum, but will Dundee take any sort of confidence going into the game that our away form has been that poor? Obviously, they, they themselves still searching for their first win under Mark McGee. I think they have to. I mean, one, if Mark McGee's got any sense, one, one look... Uh, for his players at ROA form I would give anyone confidence um, with us on the road um, we have been abysmal um, a couple results thrown in there but even then not the most convincing ones uh, so they they have to take confidence from that and that does give me massive concern obviously um, the last time we, we were down there terrible result um, just in mm. Dundee in general it's not been great this season and <laughs> um, so they, they will take confidence from that, but it's up to, you know, Jim Goodwin and uh, his staff to make sure the players do, regardless, even if we do go a goal down, to stick with that confidence, stick with the style of play that he's uh, trying to impose, uh, keep them organised and get ourselves back into the game one way or another. Yeah, it's been two trips to the City of Discovery and two defeats so far for us this season. But I suppose under Jim Goodwin, we have looked maybe a little bit better Away from home, that 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 performance in Motherwell was good. You know, just a, sl- a sloppy goal to concede, and albeit we offered absolutely nothing uh, in attack at Ibrox, we defended resolutely and were. You know, we we discussed this previously. Unlucky not to come away with a, a point in that game. So we are maybe showing signs of improving away from home, but <clears throat> I think it's safe to say a point on Saturday would not be welcomed um, by those of an Aberdeen persuasion. Uh, not at all it's essentially win or bust and just the fact it's on the road but the fact we've got such a good away crowd uh, as well the fact that that might take it away from feeling like like an away tie so much um, could mm. be absolutely vital Vital. so anyone who's making the trip um, plot it's to you yeah and I suppose well we should just finish off looking at, at Dundee they'll be without Lee Ashcroft 
Um, one of their key centre defenders um, is out with a hamstring injury, as is Charlie Adam. They'll be looking to uh, on loan striker Zach Rudden, only one goal so far um, in his time at, at Dundee. Danny Mullen as well, out of contract at the season. He's got five goals. How important for Dundee is it that those strikers start scoring in terms of their hopes to stay in the league? But for our hopes, we hope it's not this weekend. We thought our goal scoring problems were bad. Um, mm. those statistics pretty damning for the Dundee strikers uh, Danny Marlin though once on the books at Aberdeen you know maybe he's got a point to prove um, of course because he's be- also looking you know putting himself out in that shot yeah. market because the the you know rumours to be believed he's rejected a contract offer from Dundee you know Jet's going to be leaving us in the summer I'm not saying we're going to be signing Danny Mullen but you know he might be wanting to prove himself prove what he can do Mm. you know, there are going to be clubs in the Premiership that'll be looking for a striker, so... Yeah, certainly. They're always, especially, you know, in the in the lower reaches and in five goals, not a lot, but in what has been a not a great Dundee side, and obviously it's, it's sometimes uh, his, his game time limited when Lee Griffiths was at the club, etc. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, We should not be looking at strikers that have scored six goals between them uh, being concerned but here we are just given our defence as well um, given how given our <laughs> given our ability to offer up goals per chance as well well exactly it'd be typical of you know Danny Mullen five goals throughout the season or Zach Rodden one for Dundee um, just gets one chance and that's all they need and then that, that's us done uh, but you know there's obviously other threats in there but in fact Lee Ashcroft and Charlie Adam missing um it can only be a bonus. I mean, earlier in the season at Dens, Charlie Adam absolutely bossed it. So uh, mm. it can only be a good thing. Yeah, um, I suppose that means you're likely to see Paul McGowan uh, in the midfield, uh, along with Sean Byrne. I know Dundee fans have been a bit disappointed not to see Sean Byrne feature more this season. But obviously, Luke McGowan, who's returned back from injury, kind of being eased back into the squad. Um, you know, he scored what proved to be the winner of the last time the two teams met at, at Dens Park. He'll be looking again to cause uh, us no end of problems. And we've got Paul Muck Mullen, um, you know, his creativity on the wing, along with possibly Niall McGinn. And you've also got young Max Anderson, who's impressed for Dundee this season, who hasn't been able to feature due to the fact that Charlie Adams been in there, as has Paul McGowan. So they've got a lot of energy in that midfield. But, what we saw against Hibs in our midfield three, that could actually be quite an interesting battle on Saturday. Why did you say McMullen so weird, Glenn? Just so I actually said it correctly. <laughs> Fair enough. Because Graham Hunter living in your head rent free. Yeah, he is. <laughs> You're right, though. Uh, our team could prove uh, very important to this side. Um, obviously, Marley Watkins came off the bench and, uh, to provide great impact after his return from injury against Hibs. Someone I'd like to see from the start, I and mean, within you know, a couple more weeks of training, um, I, w- I w- wouldn't be surprised. And, you know, Conor McLennan, it's Conor McLennan. We all we all know what we're talking about here. Um, I think it, it would be, I would much rather see Marley Watkins come in uh, in terms of, you know, Considine back involved. I think it would be, Maybe silly to break up the David Bates Gallagher partnership right now mm-hmm. whilst they're sort of starting to do all right. What do you think? Yeah, I was it's funny, it's kind of something I was gonna ask you. I, I agree. I wouldn't like to see that partnership broken up. And to be honest, I wouldn't be against kind of going with that same starting eleven that started against Hibbs. Um, albeit if we were to make one change, I, I'm in total agreement with you. I would have Marley Watkins in for, for Conor McLennan. But obviously with Marley and his kind of injury history, we maybe need to manage that sort of game time. I know he's had a couple of weeks off to build that fitness up. But it'll be interesting to see how that kind of fits in. And if you look back to the, the game Dundee played against Rangers obviously with five subs now Rangers just chucked on players in the hope that they would score a goal and, and break down Dundee if we are in the same situation and we've got the likes of Marley Watkins to 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 call on from the bench I'd be more encouraged than if I was calling on Connor McLennan to come off the bench psychologically as a fan um, 
you know, uh, certainly a few beers deep on Saturday, if we were to be in that position, I would definitely be uh, more, more for Marley Watkins, but it, it would be nice for us to, you know, have that, that option. Matty Kennedy, maybe going to be back fit and in contention. I'm not sure we haven't heard from Jim Goodwin yet this week in his pre-match press conference. Funza Ojo as well. He wasn't involved in the match day squad at all against Tibbs. So you could even throw him back if he's uh, available into the squad. I'm not saying throw him back into the start, but give us again more options to 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 influence the game from the bench. But it it would be nice to to have these options. But I think we'll we'll see Considine remain on the bench as well. Again, maybe get some minutes if the game's dead and buried later on. Um, <laughs> a a novelty uh, against Dundee. <laughs> yeah, fat chance, but a novelty. Um, you know, he does seem to do well at, uh, against Dundee. So well, um, I'm sure he would be eager to be involved. Struggling for a goal, shove him up top. We all know what he can do. Um, <laughs> exactly. Why not? Why not? I mean, not like we've got much other options, let's be honest. Um, but another player, you know, Del McKeoch as well. Um, for once, we are maybe looking quite strong from the bench, uh, which is very encouraging. Uh, interesting about the, the, the met you mentioned about Conor McLennan. Um, maybe you'd rather he started, I suppose, with him being more match sharp than Marley Watkins as well. Uh, it's maybe something else that's to be considered. See, see on Del McGeek as well, something I was thinking of during the weekend where after our discussion about kind of players towards next season and should Dylan McGee get a con uh, a contract for next season. I always remember that seeing people argue that, oh, well, you know, Dylan McGee has got a lot of injury concerns. Michael Devlin's had two new contract extensions and hasn't played a game this season. That's all I'm saying. Do you have care? Do you have care? I do remember he, what wasn't he meant, Michael Devlin meant to be fit though in like February? Wasn't wasn't that a thing? Am I making? They that never up? stated what year of February was it. In good point. <laughs> good point. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. Will we give him a, a contract past summer? Who who knows? I would love to see Mikey Devlin fit and playing and what he could do. When it would, it would add another, it would add another centre back, and it would be like a new signing. That age old cliche will get banned. Thing is though, it actually almost would be. So I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. even mind it if they said it about him. Now, on the the game itself, we've just spoken about Marley Watkins and Conor McLennan. What we, we actually have in notes is Christian Ramirez. You know, we spoke about him after that Hibs game. You know, he received some, you know, criticism that you know, he's maybe coming a little bit off the boil. If you're Christian Ramirez, you know, you've linked really well with Marley Watkins in the past. Who do you think he would rather have starting that game? A match sharp Connor McLennan or Marley Watkins purely because you two know each other's games inside out, but Marley Watkins might not be fully fit. Marley Watkins. Uh, the only sort of two other players this season that have almost been on the same wavelength as Christian Ramirez have been Marley Watkins and Ryan Hedges, who's obviously not here any longer. Um, I don't think Connor McLennan's on his own wavelength. I, I don't really know uh, at times, but I think you do go Marley Watkins. The link-up play we've seen between them, uh, the quality, not only that, but also the work rate Marley Watkins can bring, the physical uh, power, I suppose you could say. Mm. Um, I think he would certainly be leaning towards Marley Watkins, um, and I hope that's the case as well. Uh, I think it would be vital for Christian Ramirez if he gets a goal this weekend. It could be massive for him going in towards the back end of the season. A bit of confidence now. And um, once he's had his lovely, lovely holiday, hopefully he's nice and refreshed now. Um, might have been quite stressful taking kids to Disneyland Paris, but regardless, I'm sure he had a fantastic time. And let's hope that he causes us to have a fantastic time this weekend by grabbing a goal. That's pretty yeah, good. Nicely linked there. But as well, I think what you saw from Marley Watkins when he came on, that pace, that physicality, that even that height that he offers, it's an extra threat set piece. Um, you know, Dundee are maybe vulnerable at them this season. They, they also looked vulnerable to, to players in certainly in that second half against Rangers that just got direct and, and ran at them. Um you could argue both Conor McLennan and Marley Watkins are, are, are good at doing that, but maybe one's more consistent than the other. Um, and yeah, I tend to agree. I would rather see the Welshman start because he's offered us a goal threat this season. And 
when we we're almost in need. I go back to that St. Mirren game when we had that like superbly fast start. And Watkins and um, Ramirez were both unplayable and just finishing everything. You give us something like that in the first 20, 25 minutes of the game on Saturday and it suddenly becomes extremely comfortable and you can actually enjoy your Saturday and not be be nervous right up until the full-time whistle. But, you know, it is an excellent problem to have again and where that five substitutes, you know, whether you agree or disagree with it, it does become beneficial to the so-called bigger teams in the league because those are bigger squads players that they can't necessarily fit into their starting 11 they've then got them there sitting waiting and if the game needs there you go you can just unleash them at will certainly uh, poor Will why are you unleashing them at him what's that what's he ever done <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting to see if J. Emmanuel Thomas is back involved obviously now we've had two weeks mm-hmm. over the international break yeah I can imagine no but uh, if he he apparently been working a lot by himself um, to improve his fitness if he's not if he's not back in this weekend after having two weeks to do it, then I can't imagine he'll be back in at all. But it's just you know something else to ponder. Yeah, I'll ponder it and I'll dismiss it. Fair <laughs> um, our midfield though, um, impressive against Hibernian um, last time out in the Scottish Premiership. Boyd mostly, but the by their international performances, I'm sure, and gaining some valuable experience on the international stage. Do you have any concern? I know you kind of touched on it earlier when we were looking back at the the international window that there might be some fitness concerns. Uh, obviously, you said it was impressive, Calvin Ramsey doing 90 minutes in that first game, only 75 um, in Almaty on Tuesday night. Are you have any concerns about Calvin Ramsey and Connor Barron lasting the full ninety minutes this weekend? Um, if they last, certainly Calvin Ramsey lasting the full ninety minutes definitely. Uh, given how we've seen how we've seen him, dogs raging in the background once again. Um, I think he'll be hopefully be fine to start. Uh, bless you, um, Glenn just sneezed for the listeners at home. It'll be. Interesting to see, you know, if Calvin Ramsey does start, the travel aspect, I think, is maybe even more massive um, than actually playing two games uh, in quick succession with with Aberdeen fans and, you know, Aberdeen themselves know um, the effects that can have coming back from Kazakhstan. Um, Yeah, so maybe more concerns over Calvin Ramsey. Um, I think it'll be fine to start the game then if we're in a good position. You can obviously then maybe hopefully not Funso Ojo at right back but you know as we saw against Hibs McCrory moving across um, and then we've got options in the centre of the park for uh, Connor Barron as well Teddy Jenks uh, as well perhaps you could, yeah I mean um, it, it was just an interesting one as well you know Connor Barron's obviously that's a, a couple of games I'm not saying that he's not got that fitness but obviously being a, a young player you want to be able to still be able to protect them uh, at the age they are you don't want to, to burn them out I'm sure he will probably just play through the adrenaline and, and be determined to play regardless um, but you know again it's probably in similar vein to Calvin Ramsey if the game's comfortable and we can maybe afford that as, as, you, as you allude to there Teddy Jenks maybe even Dylan McGee as well of course um, can come in similar might even see kind of those similar changes that we did against Hibs um, McGee and Walk, uh, Watkins coming on McCrory going to right back because it didn't exactly hinder us mm. um, when we made those changes uh, against Hibernian as well but how much confidence Calm do you think the players will have taken from that that victory uh, as you know you said there despite conceding the first goal we came back fought back our, our way into the game and eventually coming out 3-1 winners mm. the the glob to, to quote view from the terrace is, is very tight in that race between 4th and 10th we've, we've given ourselves that fighting chance I think we've got the best goal difference out of out of those teams um, yeah unbelievably um, so we've put ourselves in there with a fighting chance but we've we've finally showing a performance that has been missing for a long time, maybe a complete performance in a way against Hibs. How much confidence will we be taking into this game this weekend? You'd like to think a hell of a lot uh, 
you know, obviously two of the goals were penalties uh, against Hibs, but, yeah. uh, you know, to, to put ourselves in a position to win those penalties, the way we uh, took the third goal must provide a lot of confidence. <laughs> obviously, defences like to pride themselves and goalkeepers like to provide themselves on um, on clean sheets as well. We didn't grab that, unfortunately, but the fact, you know, we held on to just just conceding that one goal and they must take confidence from that as well and you know that solid base sort of gave us uh, something to go off and then to go on and win the game uh, and a, which is very a very very important game and um, as I said giving us a fighting chance put, going into two fixtures that you know with Ross County being at home as well should be winnable not comfortable but you'd like to think we could come out with six points here. A decent chance of that, you'd think. Yeah, a decent Aberdeen team with with good confidence um, should be taking six points from this fixtures. But I, I never really like this sort of fixtures at this time of the season when you come against come up against teams fighting for their lives. Um, they always make me nervous. Um, but hopefully, come when we're speaking again, um, at the beginning of next week, um, reviewing this game and, and looking ahead to what hopefully will be a, a top six shootout game against Ross County, um, there is something positive to speak out. And we've got our calculators out working out the different permutations of what results are needed and the, will draws work and, yeah. and what not for, for getting into the top six because we've given ourselves a chance. Mm-hmm. It's now up to this squad to actually go out there and execute and take that chance. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be a very, very nervy one uh, this weekend and then potentially the following one. Um, <laughs> there, there's a lot of uh, ifs, buts and maybes uh, involved too. But for once, it's exciting, I suppose, uh, the split. So th- that's at least something. But it's, oh, it, it'll be, yeah, it'll, it'll be nerve wracking. There'll be lots of biting of nails. Uh, and th- things like that but I'm looking forward to it we'd like to think that we could come out of this one I'm, I'm backtracking now with, with three points <laughs> and uh, give us a, a good chance of top six and hopefully then Europe but oof, it'll be it'll be entertaining that's for sure it will be and I suppose that, that's the thing about the top six if only there was somebody um, that could actually market the league about how exciting this this race is, and just imagine how exciting the um, race to the end of the season would be if the there wasn't that split, given the the points between fourth and tenth. That would have been a very interesting, especially if St Johnson continued to pick up the form that they that they're in right now. But um, as always. Thank you very much to Callum for your input on the episode. Thanks to you at home for watching or listening wherever you have been doing so. Um, For those of you new to the channel on YouTube, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, Remember to leave a like, leave a comment with your thoughts ahead of the game this weekend. Are you confident we can make the top six? And if you are listening, make sure to hit that subscribe button, uh, follow button, wherever you are tuning in and vote in our Player of the Year um, awards. And we'll be back next week. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you.